Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you my process for creating a photo clock. Now, this was intended to be a live tutorial. I was so looking forward to crafting with you tonight, but it just didn't happen. I could not go to bed without giving you what I intended to do during the live tutorial. So I went ahead and finished the project and I will share all of the steps with you. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and then turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every week. All right, let's look at materials very quickly and then I'll tell you about all of the steps we're gonna follow in order to get to this, to the completion of this project. Now, this is my final product. This is what my photo clock looks like and what am I going to say? I love it. You will need, let's look at the materials. You will need a clock. I purchased this clock from Walmart. I purchased this one today. It, it was $4.44, okay? So I'm not sure where you live, but in the state of Texas, this one costs $4.44 in the city of Houston. All right, you will need two little small pieces of masking tape. I used vinyl sticker paper, the AVA brand, A-I-V-A. There is one on Amazon that looks similar to this that is not this brand. Pay attention to what you're purchasing. I used a purple HTV Ront strong grip mat. You do not have to use a strong grip mat. You can use a green standard grip mat that will work just fine. I used a black Cricut pen. I used a small Phillips screwdriver. I used my Cricut cutter to trim the one sheet of cardstock. And I allowed my Cricut maker to cut the circle template for me. So this circle that's in this clock was actually cut with the Cricut Maker. I just tricked it into thinking that it was cutting something else, okay? And so you'll see my full process for doing that. Now that we've finished looking at materials, next we will head over to Microsoft Word. I will show you how to create your shape and how to get the clock template. When we finish that, I will show you how to cut out the card sock and trick your Cricut Maker or your Cricut Explorer Air 2 into cutting the clock template for you. Then, last thing I'll do is show you how to disassemble the clock put your photo in and then reassemble the clock, okay? I think the one other thing that I did not mention, there were two things. I used a regular printer, a regular desk jet printer. This is not sublimation. And you will also need one AA battery. If you are unsure of the materials, make sure to check the description box in the link below, okay? And that is about it. So without further ado, let's get started. I am in Microsoft Word. I am um, just using a Windows 11 operating system. Right now, my paper is set to portrait mode. So when I look at the layout or the orientation, I have the option for portrait right here in the top left or landscape. I'm going to keep my document on portrait mode on eight and a half by 11 size paper. Okay, so once I'm in Microsoft Word on a blank document, the next thing I'll do is resize the margins. So I'm gonna take my the margins up here at the top and I'm just gonna move them all the way out as far as they will go. So I'm moving my margins out. Okay, I'm gonna do it at the top and I'm also going to do it over here on the left. So I'm gonna move my margin all the way up. I'm gonna bring my view down if I need to, just so I can see the bottom margin because I don't want to have any, um, basically no margin on my paper, okay? So now that I've moved my margin, I have a, just a blank eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in portrait mode. The next thing I'll do is insert. I'll go to insert and I'll click on shapes. I will select the uh, shape that looks like an oval and I will just kind of bring it in and resize it. It doesn't matter what the shape looks like right now because I'm going to go over here to my top right and I'm going to resize it to 7.75 at the top for the height and the width will also be 7.75, okay? That makes a perfect circle, okay? So the next thing I'll do is I am going to go to shape, fill and I am going to fill it with the picture. Now, hopefully you've already thought about the picture you want to put inside your clock template. I'm going to show you 
how I'm going to put a picture inside my clock template. I've already downloaded a picture. I have pictures of my family already on my computer. Okay, so I'm going to go to my downloads and I am going to choose this photo right here. It just says color three. Okay, now notice the picture comes in and it fills in the shape it took on the shape that was already on the paper, okay? And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. The next thing I'm going to do is click on my shape. I already have it selected. I am going to right click with my mouse and I'm going to choose the option to wrap text. When I click, when I right click on wrap text, it gives me the option to choose the option for tight. When I select tight now i can move this circle around on my paper wherever i want to do it wherever i want to move it this is important because when i get ready to print i'll need to make sure that i move this circle so that it doesn't get cut off that no portion of it is cut off during the print okay so i'm going to move it over and now i just have it right there in the middle of my paper the next thing I'm going to do, or the next thing that I suggest you do, or you can do it, you don't have to do it in this exact order, but this is the order that I'm going to show you, is go to Google Chrome or go to whatever, you know, search engine you choose and type in a search for clock template PNG transparent, because you want to find a clock template and you're going to select the option for images not the one for all so right now i have the option for images you are going to do a search for a clock template that doesn't have the hour and minute hand so if i look at this option right here the top left this one doesn't have a, an hour or minute hand you know neither do any of these at the top I'll show you some of the ones that I like and I'll tell you why I like them. This one over here all the way to the right is not a good option because I don't need the hour and minute hands. I'm going to use the hour and minute hands that come on the clock that I purchased. This is also not a good option. This one is, you know, looks like the design is mirrored. I know I don't want Roman numerals. This is not a good option. This one looks fairly decent. It has the dot right there in the middle. I'm going to look for something that has the numbers big enough with that dot in the middle because that will help me know where to put the clock hands when I get ready to put the clock together. Okay, so I kind of like this one, but I see something weird going on over here to the right, the edge of it. So I kind of just don't like that one. I actually like this, this one right here. This one looks nice. So I'm just kind of going to kind of keep looking at them to find one that, you know, that I really like. Okay, I like this one, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click save image as and I'll just call it clock. Uh -oh. And as you can see, I have other clock templates already saved. I'm going to call it clock template three and I'm going to let me see if I have the option to. Okay, I'm going to click save and then I'm just going to get another tab and I'm going to go to um, remove.bg and I will upload that clock template. So I'm gonna to go to my clock tutorial folder. It's this one that says clock template. I'm gonna click open and I'm going to get that background removed. Okay, I'm gonna click download. And then now it's down here, it's saved on my, um, it's downloaded on my computer. I'm gonna go back to Microsoft Word and I'm gonna select the clock uh, the image that I've already started on. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I do think this is kind of small and I want you to be able to see everything. So I want to bring the view up a little bit on my screen. Now my view is at right at about 58% and I'm sure you can see that. Okay, so now I'm going to click insert. I'm going to click pictures because that's still a picture. I'm going to select the one that is the clock template with the removed background. I'm going to select that one. I'm going to click insert. When it comes in, it does come in fairly small. The same thing that I did on this image right here, I chose the option. I right clicked on it and I did. I chose the option to wrap text. Remember, wrap text allows me to move that picture anywhere I want to. So I'm going to click wrap text and then I'm going to select tight. 
and I'm gonna put this on top of the photo. Now the size of this circle is 7.75 by 7.75. So the size of this clock template should also be 7.75 by 7.75, okay? I want it to be the exact same size. Now you see I have my clock template and it's actually really, really good. Now, the one thing I love about making clocks in Microsoft Word is that you have a lot of flexibility in what you can do with the template, okay? So when I look at this template, I know that if I wanted to change the color of it or the transparency of it, I can do that. I can click on color and there are some standard colors already here. So if I wanted it to be blue or orange, which does not look nice at all, um, gray or you know, yellow, this is a gold. This blue actually doesn't look that bad. Um, I can just keep it black. Um, this is black and white. Let's see, okay. I kind of don't like any of those with the saturation or any of that, but I wanted you to see what options you have. Okay, so I'm going to not recolor it at all, but I am going to change the transparency of it just a little bit because I don't want it to be, I don't want the numbers to be more bold than they need to be. Okay, so now I like the way this looks and I'm going to just make sure that it's, you know, directly centered on top of the photo. Okay, and make sure, making sure that they're the same size. Let me go back 7.75. Okay, I want them to be the same size, but I also want this to be, you know, directly on top of the of the photo. So let me do control A to select the whole thing. And let me see. Okay, so now that I have it exactly how I want it, I will click print. Okay, and I can see that it's off. The clock template is off from the image. So I'm gonna go back and you know check it again. Check my sizing again. My sizing is off 7.75. Let me unlock my aspect ratio. Okay, I think we're good now. Now let me do a double check. Let me click file and print. That looks perfect. Okay, so now I will get my paper loaded into my printer face down and everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have my image printed out that I just showed you how I made in Microsoft Word. Remember this image is 7.75 by 7.75 and I'll make sure that this shows up on the screen so you'll remember that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and I'll need you to stay with me. You guys stay with me, you stay with me through the debacle, stay with me through this part. I am going to use a regular plain sheet of white cardstock. I do have it um, placed on a strong grip mat. You don't need to use a strong grip mat. You can use any color mat for this because I am going to have my Cricut. You can use your Cricut Maker or your Cricut Explore Air 2. I'm just going to have it cut out a circle that is 7.75 by 7.75. So I'm gonna go back into design space and just show you how I make my circle and how I kind of trick my machine because my Cricut is also going to cut out, cut out this circle for me. Let's go back into Cricut design space so I can show you that. I am in Cricut design space and I am connected to my Cricut maker. Remember, you can do the same thing from a Cricut Explore Air 2. I'm going to bring the view down on my screen to about 50%. What I'll do is go to shapes, and I will select a circle. I'll bring it to the middle of my screen and I will go up here to the, where it says size, I'm going to change the width to 7.75. And it also changes the height automatically to 7.75. So I have a perfect circle. Now that I have a circle, I am going to duplicate it. Okay, duplicate means, you know, you're gonna make a copy of it. So I have one circle here and one circle here. I'm going to take this circle and change it from a basic cut 
to a pen, okay? So now I have this circle that's 7.75 by 7.75, and I have this circle that is the same exact size. What I'm going to do is move the one that's a pin to the top of the other one, the one that's a basic cut. I will select both circles at the same time, and I will click this align button, and I will center them. So now my circle that is a pin is on top of the one that's a basic cut. Now that I have both circles selected, I will click attach and I will click make it. Okay. When it comes in on, the, on my next screen, on my prepare screen, I am going to move my circle down to right at about... Mm, a little bit low. I'm going to go down to the two inch mark and right to the middle of the mat. Okay. So when I look at my circle and I just, you know, you don't have to be that precise. Let me bring the view down right here. Right now the view is on 75%. I'm going to bring it down to 50%. Okay. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. It doesn't have to be precise because the only thing that really matters is that it's not at the top of the mat. Okay, so now everything that I'm, I'm going to do this part, I'm going to click continue. It's connected to my Cricut Maker. The material that I select is going to be card stock for intricate cut, and I'll show you why. Okay, my base material is set to card stock for intricate cut. My pressure is on default. It tells me to load the black pin because remember, the pin is what lets me know where to um, where my circle will be cut okay that and I do want my pen to be in there okay so I'm going to load my pen and my regular fine point blade and I'm going to click the flashing arrow but I'm going to do all of that on the camera I'm going to take my Cricut pen I'm going to load it in clamp A I'm going to push it down you should hear a click Close clamp A, and I'm going to click the flashing C. So now I'm not going to actually unload my mat. What I am going to do is take this inner circle off. So this is just, this was a scrap piece of paper. I'm just gonna take this inner circle off. And now I know where to put my image so that it gets cut out of this mat. And I am going to trim a little bit of this off just to make sure I get my paper positioned properly. Try saying that fast three times. I'm going to just use my cutter and just trim a little bit off the top. strong grip mat so it can hold my paper in place and I'm also going to use just a couple of pieces of tape just to keep my paper in place okay I don't need this pen anymore so remember I didn't unload it from my mat so I can pretend like I'm just doing a double cut and I can send it back through. Now, I want to be careful that it's going to cut in the right spot, and we hope that it does. So, I'm pretty sure that it cut in the exact right spot, but I can still check before I unload it from my mat. Okay, look at that. Okay, so now I have my clock and I'm ready to put it together. I don't know if you noticed this, but let me point it out for you. I don't wanna mess up my image, but let me just take my pan pan weeding tool. So that little dot is right there. That's a weird spot, but that's okay because the clock hands are gonna make it look fantastic, okay? So now I'm going to start to disassemble the clock 
remove the everything that's on the inside and then put my photo inside the clock and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm finished with this part here. Okay, so the clock comes in a box like this. The first thing I'm gonna do is just remove the backing. It says you need one AA battery. All right, the operating instructions are in here. So if you're giving this as a gift or if you are selling these, make sure you keep it. So now I'm just gonna start to disassemble the clock and I'll speed this part up. Okay, so I have the back removed and I just leave the glass in there. You, know, you can feel free to clean the glass if you choose, maybe with you know an alcohol wipe or alcohol on some tissue, something like that, or even Windex if you want, Windex if you want to be fancy. So I'm gonna turn the clock over and just pay attention to the order that the hand, the clock hands are in. So the second hand is on the top, then the minute hand is below that, and the hour hand is on the bottom. So when I'm removing these hands, I just pull them off kind of gently and just remember the order, you know? So I, I just call it going from, you know, depending on the way you look at it, smallest to largest in terms of units. So I'm just pulling this off. These um, hands are kind of, I would say, flexible. So just make sure you just try your best to keep them straight. Okay, so now I'm going to take my photo and I am going to just use my weeding tool after I find what I did with it. I'm going to use my weeding tool to just poke a hole. I'm going to use my um, Caesar Easy Weeder. And I'm just going to poke a hole right there in the middle, right where that, that hole is, okay? And I don't have to poke a very big hole because this will actually poke a hole for me. And I'm just going to line this up with the numbers that are already there, okay? And they really don't necessarily have to be lined up. Let me do it this way first make a little bit of a bigger hole. The Cricut weeder is the extra, the perfect size to make the hole for you. All right. Okay, I have it on. Right? So far, so what? So good. Now I'm going to put the hands back on the, in the exact order. So I'm going to put the hour hand on first. And make sure you hear it snap. Then the minute hand, and you're gonna listen for it to snap. And then lastly, the second hand, and make sure you hear it kind of click in there. All right, and then one thing I would say definitely pay attention to is make sure that, you know, the hands move freely before you start to put the screws back in because otherwise you just, It'll frustrate you once you get all those put back together and then the hands don't move. One way to check that is to go ahead and put the battery in now, and then you'll see if the hands move freely. So I'm gonna get a battery. So I definitely say insert the battery before you put the screws back in. Just one AA battery should do. And don't be like me. Okay, I have it in. Okay, it's ticking. Do my hands move freely? Yes, they do. Do I like it? Yes, I do. You can also, you know, use some adhesive if you want to just uh, maybe use E6000 spray if you want to spray the picture to the back. Um, I would not suggest doing that though. I mean, it's not necessary because once you hang the picture on the wall, it's not, the image is not going to be moving around anyway. All right. So then I, you can go ahead and get your clock set. The time here is approximately, I don't know, 
10 30 let's just say it's 10 30 so my hour hand would be like right in the middle of the 10 and the 11 and then right on 30 okay on the six and then now i'm going to flip my clock over and match up those holes so that i can start to put it back together And I'll speed this part up and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So this is the finished product. And what am I going to say? I love it. <laughs> I love the way this turned out. I love this updated tutorial. Thank you so much. If you joined me tonight on the live and you witnessed the debacle. I do not take it lightly when you give your time to me because your time is just as important as your treasure. And for most people, your time is your treasure. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you tried to stick it out with me, I appreciate it more than I could ever put into words. All right. Hopefully you were able to follow this process. I do love creating photo clocks in Microsoft Word because the options are endless. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.